Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at something that would have gone brilliantly with the Aurora Modular Habitat, and that is the Ranger Base Layer. So this is a one-man survival vehicle, where it's essentially a mobile base, but on a tiny scale. If I press F10 and find it, it weighs in at 183 small blocks. It does make use of the DLC blocks, so if you do not have that DLC pack, you'll probably end up with an empty gap there, but it can easily be replaced via the workshop. So like I said, this is basically if you wanted a super compact version of the Habitat, where it has everything you need for one person to survive on alien planets or on Mars. We've got cargo containers, we've got scripts, we've got a camera, we've got oxygen, we've got ejectors, we've got ore detectors, and we've even got the survival kit built on. It's got some lovely LCD screen displays there telling you everything that should go in certain spaces. So we have a storage box here, which is for ores only. Yes, you can put stuff inside it, but it is nice to have it all set up all correct. We even have a toolbox where we can dump stuff in, and we even have a button on the side to start up the engines. Can't really hear it that well, but you get the idea. It makes use of solar panels and batteries and the hydrogen engines just to power it along. So you're going to be good to go out for a very long time without needing to return to a main base. So let's take a look around the outside, shall we? So at the very front, we can see the industrial cockpit from the DLC pack. We can see a little camera straight above it, which we can deploy and turn it around to get a good 360 view without having to use the third person camera. We've got two spotlights and two little lights to light up your way when it gets very dark. We've got a nice wheel there just in front of the cockpit. So if you did bump into a rock, you're not going to do much damage to yourself. Coming around the side, we can see three lovely wheels and a whole lot of LCD screen displays and detail. So we've got the button for the engine on the side, we've got the toolbox, we've got a little piston which is being very sneaky and hiding right there. I still don't know what the piston is for but you can deploy it so perhaps if you want to attach something on there yourself, you can do. We've got our storage box, we've got our survival kit, we've got a few little blocks here unfinished to give it that extra flair. We've got our ore detector, even though we have an ore detector on the opposite side, which is what I'll come to in a little bit. If I crouch down here, you can see the battery sitting there all lovely. And if I crouch there, you can see a merge block underneath if you ever wanted to merge block it from under there. As we move around to the back, we've got two ejectors. We've got some LCD screen displays telling you what's going on with the inventory and all that, and if something has gone wrong with the inventory. We've got two brake lights, some more unfinished blocks. It just looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's so compact, and it looks great. On this side, we have a button to turn the scripts on and off. In case you don't really want to have the scripts on, you can just disable them completely and not worry about it. We can see two programmable blocks there, so this one is the driving assist, and then we have the inventory manager. We have another ore detector there, which is on the piston, which we can deploy a short distance away from the vehicle in order to make sure we're covering a large area when going out mining. If I come up above past this spare wheel, which is always handy to have, in case you don't know or don't know why people put spare wheels on, if your wheel gets damaged, which is very likely when traveling at high speeds, you can simply grind that down and put a new one onto your wheels without having to worry about going wheelless. So here's the solar panel on top, you can then see at the top of the cockpit, which we can access there, and a antenna in case you ever get lost. But as for that, that is basically it for the outside, and now it's time to hop on in. So we've got quite a few options, but a lot of them do quite similar things. Number one is exactly like the button we saw on the side there, which will start the engines, turn on the lights and all that, or we could just turn everything off should you want to do that. Number two is to deploy the camera, which will then go up a short distance. Number three is to control the camera. Four and five is to turn the camera all the way around. So if you wanted to go super fast like this, you can do. In fact, let's just leave it going like that. I'm sure that's fine. And drop it back down. 
Number six and number seven is how we deploy the side pistons. So activating those two. There goes the order detector and there goes the other piston with nothing on top. And last but not least, we have number nine, which is quite a curious button. As you probably notice, there is a light on the back of that camera. And if I was to press number nine, it would raise up and the light would start flashing. If I just stop that there, that that's perfect, it's now flashing. So if you wanted to signal someone in the distance, you could just about see that. So there is that. But now let's go and take this for a little drive, shall we? It is a lovely little vehicle to have. So let's undo the parking brake and let me just reset my camera. This thing goes fast, very fast. How does it handle on the turning? It's quite slow turning, very slow turning. So you have to make quite big arcs if you want to do a full U-turn, but it is very fast, stops fast, and it's, yeah, it's very good. It turns a lot better when moving slowly, but that is of course logical for vehicles with multiple wheels. If my Euro truck simulation experience is anything to go by, that is. Yes, we can just come around here, narrowly avoid these rocks, and then once we're done, we can just come and park ourselves into there. Which would be the space habitat. And that is basically it for this video. It's just a lovely little survival rover that I saw in the workshop and took a fancy to basically. There's a lot of survival rovers that are massive, that are literal bases on wheels. So it is always nice to see compact designs where it's not too difficult to actually build it via projector in survival mode if you wanted to actually use it in case you were unimaginative and or always simply lazy. Something that I would do basically. So the last thing to do in a traditional fashion on this channel is find a way to crash this and it looks like it looks like there might be a way to do that right over this hill so I've deployed the camera in fact I might just activate the flashing lights on the back there good 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 oh wait hold on I've confused it there there we go let's not activate this I'm sure everything is fine and down we go you know what? This is actually a really solid rover. All the wheels remain on the ground at all times. Oh, there we go. I shall crash it right here. Safely ejecting myself out. But with a head-on collision, you don't really lose much, do you? Look at that. It looks like we just lost the cockpit. So if I was just to put a new one on, let's say just go and plop this in there. I have a new keyboard in case you're wondering what's going on here. It's put like the page up and down the end and the home button in a straight line which kind of makes Space Engineers a very difficult thing to use. And back we go. Now I've got a reverse truck. So yes, a head-on collision still leaves this vehicle nice and usable. In fact, I think if I was to delete the wheels on the back there, if the, like the worst case scenario, and we lost all that, it should still be perfectly drivable. So I'm doing the parking brake. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing too dangerous underneath there that could be lost. Or nothing too valuable even. We leave a nice little sparky trail, but still, it's a solid rover to be using. So as per usual, it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. I've lost control apparently. Yes, I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.